It's always great to hear from CTG viewers about what's going on in their garden world. Here's a roundup of late April to May discoveries while shuttered at home. Laura Leggett and Joe Doherty spotted this male painted bunting in late April. Joe tells us that this beautiful bird is most associated with summer in the Texas Hill Country. As lifetime members of Travis Audubon, Laura and Joe love helping others get acquainted with birds like this male summer tanager. It's the only completely red bird in North America as cardinals have some black in their plumage. A white-eyed vireo also visited their five acres of never cleared property near Wimberley. They took these photos at their 25-foot stream that Joe built. Then he set up a photo blind nearby. Their native plants attract pollinators too. A lazuli bunting migrates over only a thin line through the Texas Hill Country before dispersing. Here's a black and white warbler and a very focused brown thrasher. Joe confirmed that Shelley McDaniel spied a red-bellied woodpecker in her Houston backyard habitat. And hummingbirds stopped by her cigar plant, Cufea ignea. Doves nested on Sandy Clary's back porch. Two babies hatched and fledged. That's when she learned that they didn't actually fly away. So she kept the dog out of the yard until they were ready to take off. Leah Carmody got this fun video of baby birds eagerly awaiting lunch. After spring rains, Julie and Jock Evans watched their bee balms grow like redwoods. And their Greg's mist flower, Conoclinium gregii, also rocketed into the sky. Here's a later shot with the bee balms in full bloom, now joined by Salvia gregii. In this one little spot of their raised bed, Julie and Joe report that they'll get a devoted audience of hummingbirds, bees, and butterflies. Co Vanderzee spotted this yellow Indian blanket, Gaylardia pulchella, among the usual flame orange and yellow tipped rays. Although less common, these yellow beauties are simply a recessive genetic variant. It's very rewarding to learn that so many gardeners are planting for pollinators instead of wiping out every single insect they see. Salvias are big favorites, like this one in Jason Whistler's garden. Prickly pear cactus flowers attract all kinds of pollinators. George Paul grabbed this shot in Maybank in Henderson and Kaufman counties. In Lago Vista, Paul Moreno found lots of bees on his prickly pear. He told us that they fought the wind on a very breezy day to hover and make several visits to each blossom. On another day, he got this shot of bees on Mexican buckeye. He also found a white grasshopper. And Aaron Montana spotted a pink grasshopper when working in his garden. Mark Sepulveda in Kyle is growing succulents in a raised bed where this cactus flower is attracting pollinators. In Lubbock, Dachshunds Foxy and TJ supervised gardener Eric Janicki. Though Foxy's a squash never too. When Eric was working in his raised bed gardens, she took off with a golden summer squash. I'm sure she knew just how delicious it would be. Eric's always happy to share the garden's harvest. He's thrilled to have black swallowtail larvae on his fennel and dill. At last count, he had 34 caterpillars in various instars. So he's planning on growing more fennel and dill next year. Instars are the different stages of caterpillar. Sorry about that, someone was barking. <laughs> Do you want to peer? No, you have to wait. Instars are the different stages of a caterpillar. Here are two instars of eastern black swallowtail caterpillars on dill plants at the Giving Garden of Carrollton. Board member Lara Margadana also spotted an egg on the fennel. Since they don't use pesticides, Lara reports that their garden is a host to a multitude of ladybugs and other valuable insect predators. From Dallas, Clarence Wyatt sent in this gorgeous English climbing rose, one of his latest garden passions. Steve Eldridge in Oklahoma City built a gorgeous raised bed edged with pink skullcaps. He's added some yellow coreopsis and plans to use those two as a good foundation to build around. In Arkansas, Roy Wilson's Southern Magnolia is both fragrant and gorgeous. Dentist Dr. Terry Boucher told him that it looks like a pineapple sitting on white pillows. His orange daylily, Hemerocallus fulva, is often called tawny or ditch lily. But you certainly don't want to ditch these drought tolerant perennials. Finally, the cloudy days of late spring prompted Greg's mist flower to bloom. In Mills County, a kaleidoscope of queen butterflies landed on the plants in Robert Mangum's garden. We can expect even more blooms and butterflies on this prolific bloomer in fall. We'd love to hear from you. Click on centraltexasgardener.org to send us your pictures, stories, and videos.